Hey everybody, welcome to episode 54. 54. It's episode 54 of our podcast, but technically it's only like episode two of three of skeins because yeah. we just named it. You know, so, we, we grew into the name. Yes, we have slightly different calendars <laughs> operating at the same time, but welcome to the three of skeins podcast. Episode 54. <laughs> You, I saw you wanted to say three. I don't know. I'm stuck on 53. <laughs> anyway, I'm Lisa. I'm Chris. <laughs> and I might have to take over timekeeping. You might. <laughs> yeah. It could happen. <sighs> we could just have a normal start one day. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Frasier, there's always a chance. <laughs> there's always a chance, Frasier. <laughs> Would you like to go first today or shall I? Sure. I'm very warm right now. <laughs> Yes, because yes. I'm wearing. So this is the Envy sweater. So if you don't know the story, last year I knew Lisa was making a Christmas sweater, but I did not know my mom was making a Christmas sweater. And I found out a week before Christmas, and I was like, "Well, you can't both have Christmas sweaters, and I don't have a Christmas sweater." So I made this sweater in a week. It's worth the wait. That's how that worked. Yes. <laughs> so I slapped this together in a week, and I literally call it the Envy sweater because I was envious that they were going to have Christmas sweaters, and I would not. Mm -hmm. so I'm wearing this. This is cotton, but it's it's you know a thick oh, that's cotton. Oh, cumulus. So, yeah, this is cumulus. Cumulus, cumulus, and cumulus dappled. Um, so I'm wearing this, and it is quite warm. But then I also have <laughs> my coat on my lap, and it, I'm actually quite cozy. Right I know now. you are. I feel like I could sleep in this thing. <laughs> 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 but here she is. So here are my sleeves. I still have to. I'm gonna, you know, do some more on this. I thought I would finish it by today. I just didn't work on it the way I thought I was going to. It's like literally the biggest thing I've ever made. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm just losing steam. But I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I'm, just, I'm not going to like, it's not going to be a UFO. But I'm just being honest. It's just taking me a little while to get through these last steps. <laughs> but the whole body is finished. So here she is. I mean, as we keep going up. I know, right? Right up, right up, <laughs> yes. like, there's a lot of her. But I started the neckline. And so I'm just doing like a faux cable with post stitches. So oh, okay. I'm doing three post stitches and then three double crochet, three post stitches, three double crochet. Um, and I'm going to do, so this is, I think four rows. Well, I'm doing row single crochet in between. So technically it's eight rows, but I'm gonna basically just do another eight rows because this is about two inches and I want my collar to be four inches. Because I think a big coat needs a big collar. Yeah. Do you want to be able to like turn it back or is it going to lay flat? I, lay I think I'll be able to wear it either way. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, she goes all the way around and then I'll do something, you know, on the sleeve that matches the cabling just to tie it all together. But yeah, she's cute and she's warm and she's come it's so light for as warm as it is. It's crazy <laughs> that it is so light. Because when I put it on, it's just absolutely comfortable. Um, I used to have this big shearling coat that was incredibly warm. So I wore it like all winter long. But combined with a backpack, yes, it was a lot. You've got to work out it every day. It was quite uncomfortable. This is something I can wear with a backpack. I was going to say that at first, but I feel like without context, that wouldn't have made sense. But I can wear this with a backpack <laughs> and be comfortable. Um. But yeah, they really, I mean, you guys have been following a while, so there really isn't anything new to say about her, except oh, the gray yarn, in particular, the gray had a lot of knots that's been bedeviling me, but <laughs> I'm just dealing with it. Um, but, you know, for $2 a skein, you get what you get. <laughs> I still got a whole coat out of it, so I'm only but so mad. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm just, it, it's cozy, it's comfortable, it's cute, it's, it's all the C's. You know what would be hilarious if you got out your old one and we weed them. Uh no, I don't I don't I don't want to know. You don't want to know? No, I really don't. <laughs> I don't want any official numbers on that. But I'm very happy with it. I'm like I don't know, I'm just really happy with it. Now, how did you come to choose this particular pattern? For the the collar? Cuz I've seen you swatching. <laughs> I swatched a little bit, but um, I I felt like I wanted something with a chunkiness factor because mm -hmm. I had this kind of texture 
happening on the surface. And so I wanted the collar to have the, the look of weight, even yeah. though it doesn't physically, you know, weigh a lot. That's what I was going for. I think you achieved that. I think those are really, really gorgeous. I'm like, I, I and look, look, look at how you can see all the different colors apart. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> see, that's what the big squares are for. Now you can see four distinct colors. Yes. Yes, you can. I was using my noggin. Yes, you did, girl. Yes, you did. <laughs> but yeah, so she's just coming along. I just have to, you know, finish her up, do her edgings, and tie a bunch of knots on the inside because I'm not losing in all these ends. <laughs> I'm not mad at you. Not going to happen. Mm -mm. The people who do it, though, what did mom make? That Oh, she made this scarf. My mom made this really cute scarf. Oh, that's right. It was a, a super scarf, so it was really long, but... She was changing colors. Uh, it was either every row or every two rows. The scarf was beautiful. But the ends. It must have been an odd number of rows she was changing. Yeah, I think it was every row because if it was even, she'd have been able to carry the yarn. So she was changing colors every row. And I think it was four colors. Yeah. It's three or four colors. And it looked like a plaid, I think. Yeah. yeah. Really, really cute. But she wove in all those ends, and that was a commitment. That was like a lifestyle choice. It was. <laughs> like, I am the person who weaves in these ends. Um, yeah, I couldn't. I could never. I could never. But it was a cute scarf. So I ain't weaving in all of these ends. You know what? If anybody looks inside and sees your knots, <laughs> they deserve what they see. Okay. They don't belong up in there. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's where I am. Just in the... The last stages. Now, how? Because I am a person who has had things end up in the in the I pond. I'm jealous of your tea right now. <laughs> <laughs> like I should have made. I tea. always make a cup of tea before because my throat <laughs> gets so dry. But um, how do you keep motivating yourself? Because I know sometimes I thrive on the excitement of getting something going. It's about wearing it. I so just now have to. I like yourself. literally like sometimes I have an outfit in my head. So when I I made this sweater, I have yellow jeans that I knew were going to that I was going to pair with this sweater, and I had that outfit in my head as I was making. Um, it's it's about wearing it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it it, there was no point to doing all of this if you're not going to wear it. So just finish it. That's yeah. what sometimes keeps you motivated. The home stretch is the hard stretch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wearing it has to be your motivation. That's why I don't get amigurumi. I mean, the, people are doing some really beautiful and cute stuff, but I could never stay motivated long enough to finish an amigurumi project because I don't have that pull like, oh, this is what I'm going to do with it when mm -hmm. it's done. So yeah, that, that's one of the reasons I make clothes because I it keeps me focused. It keeps me engaged with my project. Yeah. Although I have mad respect for amigurumi makers. There are some technicians, okay? There's this woman. Technician. She was on YouTube. I don't know if she still has the channel. It was Twinkie Chan, and she's also published some pattern books. She did this iPad cover mm -hmm. that looked like a TV dinner. Oh, stop. With the trays and the compartments and the little foods in each one. Respect. Okay. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> and I would never make that, but if I saw it like at someone's fair, I'd have bought one. I saw you could have um, charged me a good amount of money. Yeah, for that. <laughs> I saw a chess set that the person had designed to look like members of the royal family of oh, England, God. and it looked like them. And I was like, I would never do this. I don't think I have. I would have the skill to make actual little sculptural portraits of people and make it a chess set. Made the board too, by the way. So I got no hate for Amigurumi. I just know <laughs> I, I, I'm not on that level. Mm mm. Mm mm. So, what are you in the final stretch of? Oh, uh, well, I'm also in the home stretch. Now, it's a little crunched up on a needle right now, so it's going to be hard to see. But I have the entire front of my niece's vest on the needles now because I'm doing the um, button bands and neckline. So, it's finished. It's sewn together already. I know it's a dark color. Oh, look at that. If I put it closer. <laughs> I picked up the armholes over the course of the week. 
And now it has a right front and a left front. Yes, it has a right front <laughs> and a left front. That That's a feature. In two different directions. And I took my smaller needle. I think I'm working on a... I'm always like scared when you like... Really? Manipulating me. I'm like, it's coming right at me. <laughs> anyway, this is my 4.5 millimeter needle. And I was also working on a five for the body. And I just picked up stitches along the front to do the button band. So I wasn't sure what kind of buttonhole I wanted to do. So I got my swatch back out. Now people often ask me, well, what do you do with a swatch when you're done with it? The answer is you're never really done with it. But I was able to use my swatch to pick up a practice button band and try out my, my buttonhole. And I decided to go with what's called a narrow slit buttonhole, which is actually kind of fun because what you do is you do, it's like a variation on the yarn over buttonhole, but you give it a little bit of structure because you do a left leaning and a right leaning decrease right into the same yarn over. And it kind of creates a little, I don't know, a little holder of stitches so that the buttonhole won't just completely stretch out but it does have a nice amount of stretch to it. And it's not actually in the ribbing. It creates almost like an extra row. Let me hold that up close. So you see it's between the ribbing sections. And you see how it has those little arcs? So it's actually a little round buttonhole, which I, I it just charmed me. And I was worried because it looks small, but I tried three different sizes of buttons. Just push through and they all fit, which was wonderful. And I like that they're not very obtrusive when there's no button. There's no button in it. It's just like a little hole. And I also picked up stitches along my swatch to see what ratio I would need to use to pick up and not have a wavy button band. Oh, and that's the other thing. It, they didn't distort my button band a lot. So my button band, this is not blocked or anything. So it is, it's still laying relatively flat, which I was like, yes, because I've seen some wavy button bands and I don't approve. <laughs> Just putting it out there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I got a spool of ribbon. The other thing that can make your button band wavy, your button hold can stretch out. Now there's a bunch of different things you can do to prevent them from stretching too much. One of the things, the thing I'm going to do is I got this grow grain ribbon from Joann's, you know, nothing fancy. I'm going to cut a length of this ribbon and sew it on to the back of the button band. And that's going to support the buttonholes and prevent them from stretching out over time. And it will prevent the front of the vest that you're always handling mm -hmm. from stretching down. And distorting. And I'm also going to put it on the other side. Now, is the ribbon going to cover up the hole? Do you have to cut the ribbon? Yes. Okay. I'm going to slash the ribbon in like a V shape oh. and just stitch it down. That sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> but it will it will make it hold its shape really, mm -hmm. really nicely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the button band. And that will support the buttons. That way the, the weight of the button won't pull the button band down also. Mm -hmm. So the button band should, should lie nice and flat. And I'm also considering putting a little length of ribbon on the shoulders because the shoulders are supporting the weight of this thing. Mm -hmm. And that will make them not stretch out either. So the, the jacket, the little vest should be well That's supported. It's a little bit of sewing. Just it's just ribbon, just lengths of ribbon. So that's that's something you can consider doing as a finishing step because sometimes it's in the finishing where things can look really nice or go a little awry. So doing that gives everything support. And this is a kid wearing this. There's gonna be times when she's running and jumping and carrying on. So I'm gonna give this thing every chance to to hold itself together. So I ordered the buttons. I think it was either yesterday or the day before. And one day they will send them to me. 
one day. And I ordered an extra set of buttons that I'm just going to give to mom, to my other sister. So that when one is inevitably lost, <laughs> she'll have a matching button. I don't know why you're sending it because you know the vest is coming back here for repairs. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> then we shall have a matching button that can just go right on there. Boop. But that's where I'm at with this. And I'm actually going to do a little practice stitching of the ribbon in on because I got to do a slash and I want to see exactly where to cut it and all that. But that's it. And that's what one thing you can do with your swatch. Technically speaking, I could have practiced four different ways mm -hmm. of doing buttonholes, but I like this one. So I was like, yeah. But that is my progress. Or Rachel's vest. And you haven't been secretly swatching anything else? I picked some yarn, but I haven't swatched. I did. I picked some yarn. Because, yes, I have the itch, okay? <laughs> I do. I'm, but you know what? You know what is helping me? Doing the detail work on this. It mm -hmm. is helping me not need to start a new project. I think... I don't know. I think startitis happens when you get bored with the project. Mm -hmm. And... Figuring out the button band and the number of stitches to pick up. It was it was another puzzle to solve, so I wasn't bored. But this one at a time thing, oh, it's work. It's really not. It is. It feels, because, let me tell you, there are like 10 things dancing in my head right now. Right, but this one is inching ever closer to being finished because you're not working on any of those 10 things. I know, I know, and I tell myself that, but sometimes myself doesn't care. Like, <laughs> Girl, make a swatch. You'll feel better. Okay, that's what it says. <laughs> you'll feel better. Make a swatch. Uh, I've been swatching a little, but not for a project. Mm. Technically, not for a garment, but for a long-term project. So I've mentioned that I'm using my uh, Japanese stitch dictionary as like a master class in reading charts. So I've started following those stitch diagrams to try to make sure I learn how to, you know, read all the different symbols and stuff. Some of them get quite complicated, like they get more and more complicated as you go on. So it's going to get challenging, but so far, like the first three were okay. Um, so I want to do all of them in the same yarn. So I have a, a big cone of a wool of a lion brand wool from their LB collection. And I'm doing very small swatches because these are not like gauge swatches for garments. So I'm just mm -hmm. doing enough to know that I know how to do the stitch pattern. And I've, I've started that. So I will show you all my swatches as I'm going along. I have to iron them though. I have a, on like a ring and they're, they're curling up. So. But I have a whole system for keeping them organized and everything and it should work out. So it's there are 300 stitch patterns in that book. Oh. The plan right now is to do them all, but I might be lying. Okay. <laughs> that is a long-term project, though. It yeah. is. It is. Now, but I, if I did one a day, it would take me less than a year. Yeah. Yeah. Don't 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 think those thoughts. Okay. Those thoughts will set you on a very bad path. <laughs> Have you noticed any difference? Uh, in style or um, composition in those stitch patterns than ones you've done out of other stitch dictionaries? What I will say is that I've noticed in this book, they oh, use... What's the name of the book? Oh, I think it's just called something, Crochet Patterns 300 or something like that. The title is literally the only English in the book. <laughs> so... Um, I've noticed that they do these uh, stitch patterns at different weights. Mm -hmm. In most of the American books, everything's at worst at weight. Right. Um, but they have they're they're changing the weight throughout. There's a whole section that's just done in like a mohair kind of yarn. Oh. Um, so you do get to see different stitch patterns at different weights, and I like that. I'll I'll be using the same yarn, so all of mine will be at the same weight. But I thought that was really interesting because you just you don't see that. In American six dictionaries, everything is worth it. But are they also suggesting that this, this no, pattern might no, look better? What they're suggesting because it's not an English. 
Maybe they make a suggestion. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I'm assuming that, you know, the yarn that they use for a given stitch pattern is like, oh, you know, this would be a good yarn for the stitch pattern. Yeah. Like a lot of the, the lacy patterns are in the mohair. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but I'll, I'll be using it's. A, I'm using a fingering weight wool, a virgin wool. So that's all of mine are going to be in that. <laughs> no, that's no problem. I don't think that's a problem at all. What about uh, knitting stitch dictionaries? Did they tend to use? They tend to use the same yarn all throughout the book. All throughout the book. Yeah. I have several, and they seem like they pick a yarn. And that's what they use. Mm -hmm. The only complaint I've had with some of my um, six canaries is the color yarn they chose was not the best choice for some textured pattern. And I wish that they would at least change the color depending on what you need to see because some are the mm -hmm. pattern and it's hard to see. Well, that's what's going on in my stitch in life at the moment. Terribly exciting things, right? <laughs> I think it's pretty exciting that you chose a stitch dictionary in a language you don't speak or read and <laughs> you decided to work from it. That that's pretty dang exciting. We will see how this okay. goes. I got my Japanese stitch dictionary in translation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> so I I think that's that's pretty exciting. I can't wait till you show us some of your swatches. That that should be amazing to see. <laughs> it's very hard to crochet like this again. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm gonna do a quick announcement. I have a class coming up. It is called the Maker Studio. And it is really a project class where you bring a project and we work on it together to bring it into fruition. So it can be a project you've already started and kind of got stuck or something that it demands that you expand your skills and you'd like some guidance. I do have a blog post up about it. I'll post a link to it in the description bar. Anyway, this message was sponsored by Anichip. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. That's so fun. <laughs> I'm making dreams come true over here. Tiny dreams. Tiny dreams. <laughs> So, what else do we have to talk about today? What we've been watching on TV? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see what happened was, we've gotten a little caught up in British politics. It's been everywhere. Actually, on YouTube, we were watching. Yeah. So... So the backstory is, you probably know, Boris Johnson stepped down. Mm -hmm. And parliamentary system is completely different from our electoral system, right? And I'm kind of like learning about how all of that is different as this goes. But I was curious how they end up selecting a new prime minister because this will not, they, they weren't going to have like a general election where the public voted. Instead, it was just going to be the Tory party that is in power right now, choosing a prime minister from among their ranks, which fascinates me. Like how you have a prime minister, how you have a leader that your public did not elect. It, it's crazy to me. So I was like, oh, I want to watch this and, and see how it happens. And then things got really wild. So they, they put this woman in office named Liz Truss. I suggest y'all take a look at some of her TV interviews on yes. YouTube. She's yes. terrible at interviews. Oh my gracious. I'm, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Herschel Walker reminds me of her. I have been avoiding watching Herschel Walker interviews because <laughs> it's uncomfortable. <laughs> I feel like, you know, he has some troubles. Um, <laughs> I haven't wanted to see that on display, but I, I, I will assume your comparison is accurate, but so they put this woman Liz Trust in and she just resigned after 45 days in office. Yeah. And British politics is a lot more, let's just say rough and tumble than ours. And they're reporters. 
hardcore. I appreciate them. Their reporters are no joke. I mean, they will say after the person has given a non-answer, that's not the question I asked you. How about starting an interview? Like, isn't this embarrassing? I was like, oh. <laughs> oh. Are you a shame prime minister? Oh, that, that's hello. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> For me, um, it was the, I can't even call it shade because it's not shade. It's, it's just terrorism. Um, this newspaper, someone said, Liz Trust will have the shelf life as a, of a head of lettuce. And this newspaper. It's a tabloid. It's not like it. It's yeah. It's like newspaper. the New York Post. So, you know. Um, they actually put a camera on a head of lettuce and left with it on a, a table with a wig and left it on a table to rock. put a blonde wig on the head of lettuce. And, the, the and a joke, timer. Yes. To see who lasted longer, the head of lettuce or a Liz Trust. The lettuce won. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. I was like, oh, woo. It all started going wrong with something she called the mini budget, which was supposed to set out an, a general idea of what her economic policies would be. And as soon as she announced the mini budget, the, the pound, the British pound lost value. Um, there were 65 billion pounds of losses from pension funds. And something uh, oh mortgage mortgages, rates went yeah. way up and so some people will have to pay more on their mortgage but also apparently hundreds of mortgage offers were rescinded so that people who thought they were about to buy a house found out they weren't going to buy a house and this happened like with it like the day of and then within the following days of her mini budget announcement but then she kept insisting that the mini budget was fine and it didn't cause those problems and she was going to stand by it and things were going really bad economically. And so she fired her chancellor. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Who's the money guy. Yes. The chancellor of the exchequer. She fired him and she brought in a new guy and new guy decided that they were basically going to cancel just about everything in her mini budget, which was terribly embarrassing. I mean, this was her first, this is the policy she ran on when she was trying to get her members to put her as uh, prime minister and then she you know was standing by it for so long and then he well, just said well yeah. we're not doing any of that was here. it a week that she was standing by it i don't even know if the mini budget yeah. lasted a week and yeah. people were saying that the new chancellor was really the prime minister and he clearly had all the power and whatever whatever and people kept asking the question well who's in charge who's who's running the country right now and the mm-hmm. funny thing was Everybody didn't have the same answer. No, no. And that that is that that's a problem. If you're supposed to be the leader of this country, that when someone asks who's running the country, not everyone said you. Oh. So it's been riveting. Okay. It's been, been better than like a soap opera. Been, I have to be I was just I about mean, to but say. for the fact that it's affecting real people. Yeah, lives. that part we're not like enjoying at all. But because we don't have a, any skin in that game, no dog in that fight. I I have been watching it like a soap opera. But here's the crazy thing: they might get Boris Johnson back. Yeah, didn't because see that coming. now they their party has to choose another chancellor. So here's the thing: they they don't have an election schedule like we have. Um, a prime minister can call for a general election and just say we're going to have an election on such and such a date. I think there's like. A certain amount of time before you can call mm-hmm. consecutive general elections, but the prime minister can call for a general election at any time. The Tories do not want a general election because right now Labor Party is way out polling them, and supposedly if there were a general election right now, the Tories would be decimated. Um, so they want to try to choose their new prime minister in a week's time because last time when they put Liz Truss in, it took like what, fifty-seven it? days. I think yeah, it took like two months. Mm-hmm. So they want to do this very quickly. Um, so they said Friday we pick a new one. basically. <laughs> so next and Friday. so people are going to toss their hats in the ring and say, mm-hmm. "Okay, I want it to be me." But Boris Johnson was on vacation in the Caribbean, and he has flown back to England early to try to contend for prime minister. And I'm just like, so we're going to pretend because you know what? So this guy who came in second after Liz Trust, this guy named Rishi Sunak, was 
Boris Johnson's chancellor. See, I'm learning all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I can name British chancellors now. Oh, my God. I didn't even know that position existed until I started watching all of this stuff. But he was Boris Johnson's chancellor and he resigned. And that was seen as like the death knell for Boris Johnson. So he had to step down after like a very high ranking person in his cabinet stepped down. Um, So a lot of the Boris Johnson people hate Rishi Sunak. So he's probably going to run again and try to be prime minister. But there's a huge contingent in among their membership that doesn't want him. So, and of course, I guess if Boris Johnson came back, the people who hate Rishi Sunak would obviously support oh, Boris Johnson. Mm-hmm. And then there was the woman, Pen- Penny something more than came in third last time around. She will probably toss her hat in the ring. So they could get Boris Johnson back after all of them scandals. Like none of that ever happened. And when the former, was she the foreign secretary? She she just stepped down because she's trying to run for a prime minister. It's a mess. It's it. I, mm. And they also it's a mess in a different way from our politics. Yes, but it's still a big. It's mess. still a mess. Okay, it kind of. It's like you realize that things are not set in stone the way you think they might be. They're not, Certainly, the prime is. minister in England. Nothing. Your is. tenure is not set. In stone. You could be outlived by a lettuce. Yes. Oh, there was also a tofu. But the thing is, what Liz Trust did that lost her so much support and caused so much damage was try to institute Republican style economics and economic policy. Trickle with, down. Yes. By giving huge tax cuts to wealthy people. But in England, they have they make no bones about the fact that their social services are financed by taxes. We we try to play those games where we act like that's not really what's happening. Mm. But in England, you know, their education, their health care, as well as, you know, things like transportation and the like are all financed by taxes. So when you say there's going to be a huge cut in taxes, people are like, well, how do these things continue to be funded? And British people weren't having that which was fascinating to me that trying to institute those kinds of policies in the UK actually led to the downfall of their prime minister in less than two months. And it might take the Tory party down if they're not careful because they're trying to structure this prime minister choice a quickly and B they want to keep, they don't want to have an election Mm -mm. and there are members that they don't want them to vote. Yes. That this is part I'm so not are. clear about, and I might have to take to Wikipedia <laughs> to get some clarity on this. But basically, there's the members of parliament, and I've seen on the news that there are 357 members who will be voting in the first round of elections for the prime minister. But then there's something called a group of people called the party members. And I'm assuming those are kind of like delegates, like uh, analogous to U.S. delegates. I'm not entirely sure. But basically, their party is trying to wrap this all up in the first round and prevent it to go from this go prevent it from going to a second round of voting that would go to the party members because they just want only the members of parliament to decide who the new prime minister is going to be. Now, Johnson is a polarized, and the way they've structured this, the candidate has to get a hundred votes in order from to the three group of three hundred fifty seven. So there can only be three candidates. Exactly. That's another thing. Are they going to forcibly limit the number of candidates? Because if it goes to four, there could be a situation where not everyone, not where no one gets a hundred. Yeah, that's why there's only going to be three, and then, three candidates. And then what? So they're doing everything they can to keep this as tightly in-house as humanly possible. Which just it's anti-democratic to me. Like, first of all, you only keep there's already a small group of people who are going to have a say in who the prime minister is. And then you're going to try to further restrict that? Really? That's because the Tories are doing what the Republicans are doing and trying to hold power no matter what. That's why they're terrified of an election. At this point, if they had an election, they'd be gone. So, this is all fascinating to me. And I guess... You know, it's it's been, I've been able to follow all of this more closely, really, than I'm following U.S. politics because I don't have the emotional investment. Mm-hmm. 
So it, it's not as hard to watch as some of <laughs> what's going on in U.S. politics. Mm. Um, so I can just kind of sit back and say, what? No, she didn't. <laughs> but she said that? <laughs> If you but, don't watch anything else, watch. There's several compilations of Bliss Trust interviews. They are astonishing. Because she does a technique that's called fogging, where she will just say the same thing over and over again, no matter what question she's asked. So if her phrase to fog is, the sky is blue, and you ask her, did you have hot dogs for lunch? She's going to say, well, <laughs> hot dogs are nice, but the sky is blue. And she don't mind, you know, every time she changes her mind or something, they call it a U-turn. And she, she don't mind these U-turns because she'll say one thing in an interview today, like, oh, I'm absolutely standing by this policy. And then the next day. So yesterday mm -hmm. she said in parliament that she wasn't resigning because she's a fighter, not a quitter. Well, before 7 a.m. our time this morning. <laughs> and today. I looked at my iPad this morning and the first thing I saw was trust resigns. I was like, what? But here's the crazy thing. The craziest thing at, of all of this to me, Liz Trust and Boris Johnson are still members of parliament. Yes, they are. The The chancellor she fired, Quasi Quartang, he is still a member of parliament. So all these people who have this weird history with each other and have this conflict between them, Rishi Sunak is still a member of parliament. The Home Secretary who just had to resign from Liz Truss's cabinet, Sue Braverman, she's still a member of parliament. They're all still there. It's like a jacked up family reunion. It is. <laughs> it is. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, how are all these people supposed to like operate together as a unit? So when you feel like television has just become bone dry, Check out British politics. It's amazing. We have been literally riveted. Every we were day. Like, what? I've been watching this stuff every, every day. single day. I can go days without watching American news, but I have been watching it. Because I honestly, so she spoke, she was supposed to, Liz Truss was supposed to make a new economic policy announcement October 31st, ironically, right? Mm. Um, and I thought she was going to try to hang on until the 31st. I said to you yesterday. I didn't see, see today coming. People have been saying for, over the course of let's say this week, she's going to be gone in, you know, a month. Then it was oh she's going to be gone in a couple of weeks. Then she's going to be gone in days. There was actually a, like a, a countdown happening. But the most titillating detail for me was that apparently yesterday there was some sort of vote. That's supposed to take place on was it, it was fracking? Fracking. It Apparently, was fracking. labor was trying to get some sort of anti-fracking vote, and some members of the Tory party were going to vote with labor, and the Tory leadership did not want that. Oh, by the way, the whip resigned and the assistant whip resigned. Yeah, that was another. Except they didn't. Because then they were still there. I, mm -hmm. They said they were going to resign, but apparently it never took effect. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah, because they're still there. Oh, okay. Anyway, the whips do sort of the same type of thing that all whips do. They get people together and get them to vote. They, they make them vote a certain way. Yes. But in Parliament, the voting system is, in my mind, fairly wild. Everybody gets up. They go out to a lobby. And then there's two doors, the yes door and the no door. And when everybody files into their door, they count heads, and that's how the vote gets decided. Come to find out, there were people physically restrained from entering the door they wished to go in, and other people were forced to go through. Yes, were literally no surrounded door. and frog marched through the no door. And I'm looking for the video. And I think that's why she had to resign that things had devolved to that point yes that the body of parliament was no longer functioning yes i think that more than anything was what meant she had to resign today because they have something called the 1922 committee that makes rules for the tory party yeah but they just and make up whatever rules they want he went to see her he went to number 10 downing street basically to tell her <laughs> 
exit. Stay left. <laughs> you ain't got to go homeless. But you got to get the heck up out of here. <laughs> But, so he's yeah. apparently the headsman because he did the same thing with Boris Johnson. That's a thankless job. <laughs> wow. Apparently Boris Johnson ain't got no hard feelings because yeah. he's coming back. I I'm don't back. know. So I don't know if I don't know. I, I truly don't know if he can. I don't know. There's don't, nothing in the rules barring I, him. I don't see Sunak getting enough votes. And I don't see the Home Secretary getting enough votes because Boris has a big contingent. I don't know. Yeah. So this is what we've been. I it nonsense. Yes. Nonsense. I guess for British people, it's not nonsense. It's all very important. Um, uh -huh. Scotland's trying to break away in all of this. Um, Go ahead, guys. Do it. <laughs> which is like fair enough. Get rid of them colonizers. <laughs> But um, it, it's been fascinating. I've been learning a lot about the differences between our system and the parliamentary system. And yeah, I've been seeing the differences between American journalism and British journalism and child. And in England, they just say it. They just, they say the words, whatever it is. You remember at the beginning of the Trump administration, there were very pearl clutchy conversations on our news shows about should we call the president a liar although he's lying right now they, they don't have that in England they'll be like that's not true and here's why it's been fascinating I know this is like a weird like deviation for us we're <laughs> i feel like we're, we're like one of those true crime podcasts i know now. <laughs> i just the feeling i'm getting watching all this stuff go down but you know we like to just tell you what's going on like you know day to day for us you know what movies we're watching and you know if we, if we go to a thing or what have you and so this is honestly it it's been so present for us every day it, it just made sense to talk about every, it. every day we've been watching this situation develop and it's been almost hour to hour something's been occurring that's just yeah. wild now the question is who's going to be the new prime minister of england because it'll be their third for the year yes yes it will <laughs> there's a joke going on on twitter right now that charles the first dissolved parliament charles the second dissolved parliament so charles the third know what to do yeah, there's a very small subset of people who get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> but, so, yeah, that that's what we've been into lately. And I guess we'll update you when they have a new Yeah, we'll let you know how it turned out because, like I said, it's like a soap opera. And happily for you, if you're just hearing about it from us, all the videos are up already. You can catch up. Because it's been crazy watching it develop day to day. Yeah. Yesterday, we were just speculating about how long she was going to last. I thought she'd outlast the lettuce. I mean, did. I didn't. I was like, oh, no, this is good. I saw the timer ticking down. That's embarrassing. <laughs> and that's the other thing. We were astonished at the audacity because... Uh, it has been very a very difficult time for Liz Truss, okay? Not only have people literally been just talking about her incompetence, and she has nothing to say to that except, you know, the sky is blue or whatever her point was for that day. But little things like there was a bunch of protesters outside and they were complaining about the various policies. And then someone said, and you're, you're wearing shit shoes. I mean, so down to her shoes. <laughs> And then she said that Margaret Thatcher line, this lady is not returning. And then within 24 hours, yeah. she reversed everything she said. Yeah. So there, there's other little details, but I'm sure y'all are already <laughs> bored. Yeah. But there are, there's some of you who are probably like, what? Is that really going on? So yeah, check it out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been, been fascinating. Something. And we will reconvene when the UK has a new prime minister. Indeed. And we'll see if that one makes it to the end of the year. They could squeeze in the fourth one. I'm sure they could do several more. 
Okay, I'm sure they could do several more because if they average what 40 days, the that, head of labor said into. in the Tory party, everyone gets to be prime minister for 15 minutes. <laughs> he might not be wrong, he may not be wrong. Anyway, I think that's it for me yeah. for today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's our soap opera. If you want to take part, enjoy it. Play it out all on YouTube. <laughs> Mom's going to be tripping when she sees this. I know. <laughs> I know. Like, what are what? y'all talking about? <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about what we've been up to or any questions about the soap opera, let us know in the comments. Oh, by the way, what's your favorite soap opera? You know what ours is now. Stay safe.